Welcome to another season of Coffee and Whiskey with Ivy. I've had a great seven weeks break and in the seven weeks I have done a few things. I spoke to many of the people who visited me in Paradise, Bollywood Veggies, and asked them for their views about living on this beautiful island called Singapore. The conclusion is very simple. Most people are happy because we live in a blessed country. We do not have volcanoes, we do not have earthquakes, we do not have mega storms. We have some floods, but you know, it's either flooding or ponding, but not serious tsunamis which drown many, many people. We also do not have local strife, we do not have mass killings, we do not have uh, mad, many, many mad people shooting at each other. We do have a suicide almost one every day. We do have distressed adults and children. We do have perverts who molest women and children. But the worst thing is, we have pimps and parasites pretending to be professionals in our business and our political scene. And that is the biggest problem people face because they do not understand that a lot of Singaporeans are living from hand to mouth. Section 377A. I thought I should talk about this because many people have come to ask me for my opinion on this issue. First of all, as far as I am concerned, paradise is made for all life. I think that whatever people do in the privacy of their homes uh, is their own business. Whatever you do behind closed doors, as long as nobody is hurt, a young child is not hurt, or you're not uh, doing it with something that will scream in unhappiness, I think it's your own business, as long as it's between consenting adults. What happens if your children grow up to become like that? Because I believe there is a third gender, right? And I think we shouldn't point fingers at people because when you point one finger, there are several pointing back at you. And if those religious people think that it's wrong, what about gambling? What about prostitution? What about paying people slavery charges? Why don't you speak up against all that which is happening in our country? And it is causing more damage than Section 377A. Uh, ESM Go. I do not receive a ministerial salary. Uh, DPM Tio explains clean wage system for ministers. Look, cut out the crap. And then the Prime Minister some time ago also said, oh, we earn so much and so much and it's don't know how many points. Are they giving us a PSLE mathematical uh, question to solve? How difficult is it to follow the examples of real first world countries? They publish the exact salary of all their ministers, etc. And we are not complaining if you are smart and you can earn a lot of money because smart people who work hard should be paid well. So just give us exactly how much you are paid, what is your salary, what is your bonus, how much money you make as director, how much you make work, uh, how much money you make extra as a member of parliament when you're working as a lawyer, a doctor, etc. We are not depriving you of being able to earn money as long as we know exactly how much you earn. Masagos Zulkifi, he is a good person. He has no bulldust about him, you know. He says he likes to bring up an analogy of how one would divide bread between Malays and Chinese. People will say, give to the Malay because the Chinese is rich. But he said, his attitude is, he will ask, who is hungry? And I think that is very, very good. The other thing he said is, I believe in the power of teamwork. And he said, if you want to go fast, do it alone. If you want to go far, go together. I think these two points are very good. I'm going to always use it when I give advice to people. Uh, Minister, you reminded I will ask about Kongguan biscuits, so we have some biscuits here. I don't know whether they're Kongguan, but I'm sure they're going to taste just as good. Thank you for reminding us about our past. 
Shan, our country just need honest leaders. We need leaders who know what's happening to everybody in this country. Not leaders who are pretending to be blind to the fact that many Singaporeans are living from day to day or hand to mouth. If you don't agree with me and you think that Singaporeans are all very rich and all very happy, please write to me and let me know. I'll be very happy to hear your views and I will send your views to the minister because I know that Minister Shan reads my emails. He's a smart minister. He believes in good feedback. This poor 13 chicken firms fined 26.9 million for price fixing. You know, it fascinates me why they are bullying these small time chicken farmers whose total business is only half a billion dollars, right? Why don't these wonderful sleuths go after the big petroleum companies, the water supplier in our country, the electricity suppliers in our country, and all the other suppliers of things that are done by monopolies, not even a cartel. Electricity tariffs to increase from October 1 to December 31st. I'm not surprised. You see, when you see top of the news and they say 700 million is being given to 2.8 million Singaporeans by our good Mr. Heng Sui Kiat, you must start getting worried because whenever they, he gives you something by the right hand, he will take back from the left hand. How many of you took the trouble to get a calculator to calculate how much that works out to per person? It's only $250. Go look at those families who are earning 1200 and below and your 70% of Singaporeans who earn less than 2000 and push up their salaries so they can make a decent living. Cut out tokenism. Introduce a minimum wage. My Sunday was spoiled by these headlines, you know. People are prostituting even our public hospitals. You know, there are agents getting foreigners to come to our public hospitals, they get 8% commission on a hospital bill of 500,000, which is 40,000, which is more than the annual salary of a staff nurse, right? This is pathetic. Public hospitals should just have one class, C class, and all Singaporeans go there, right? They should all be nice, comfortable, air-conditioned, and so that people can just go there and get well, right? All those who want more than that, go to a private hospital and pay for it yourself. He made very good points, you know, he talked about how the curriculum has been reduced by almost as much as 50% from years ago, but I don't know why children still need so much tuition. But I think he has forgotten the number of kids in a class. The average class size is still about 36 to 40 kids. Mr. Ong Yi Kang, make the class sizes smaller. Make teachers feel proud of being teachers. Have the top brains in your schooling system. Not in government, becoming a member of parliament, but teachers. Former school site to house services for young and old. This is something that is thought of by Desmond Lee. I like him. He said, These kinds of purposeful uses of old school sites enable some thoughtful and creative and innovative programs to allow children, urban farmers, local communities, seniors in the house, nursing homes to interact. I think it's a damn good idea. It's creating circles of life, which I love. I like this. Singapore's first turtle hatchery opens in Marine Park. Good idea. And Desmond Lee, good guy. You know, a lot of people say Singapore has no natural resources. But they are wrong. Our greatest natural resource is our location. Whoever or whatever I call it the universe put us where we are with beautiful clean water, safe harbour, 
for humans for trade for for people for birds even right singapore's location is a blessed resource no other place in the world i dare say is the center of all action my hard working crew went through all the shows in the last season and pointed out all those people who have not given me an answer minister iswaran why haven't you told us who who is behind the cyber attack on the sing health group we need to know who these evil people are don't let us live in fear and wonder we want to know who our enemy is let us know we are not stupid and high flux how come people are owed 2.95 billion how did that happen how did our government allow this to happen how did our financial controllers allow this to happen right luckily only one good group of people came back with an answer when i asked whether johnson and johnson baby powder in singapore is safe they sent me a very very long well written report explaining the medical benefits etc etc so i'm happy to say i now carry a johnson johnson baby powder even to my studio because it keeps me cool Thank you for watching this new season of Coffee and Whiskey with Ivy. Remember to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but you get reminded of the show.